I'm going to take you through dashboard design best practice tips and advice from Gecko Board. The first thing to ask yourself when it comes to dashboard design is what do I want my dashboard to achieve? What is the purpose of my dashboard? Following this, there are a number of questions that you can ask yourself, and we will cover these in the following slides. So, am I including any unimportant numbers? Am I using size and position to show hierarchy? Do my numbers have context? And do they make sense with or without that context? Are my related metrics grouped? Is my dashboard consistent? Are my labels clear and easy to understand? Have I rounded my numbers? And finally, is it time to evolve my dashboard? Let's take a look into these. So firstly, make sure that you're only including the most important content. When it comes to building a dashboard, less is most definitely more. You want to make sure that you really are just focusing on, in on those key numbers. If you're including unrelated or unimportant numbers, it will blur the image of the dashboard and people will not focus in on those most important numbers. So do make sure that you're not just adding any additional content for the sake of it. Use size and position to show hierarchy. So we always advise that you put your most important numbers in the top left hand corner. That's because that's where the eye is naturally drawn when you're looking at a dashboard. And you can size that number up so that it emphasizes the importance. Don't be afraid of empty space on your dashboard. It's better to have empty space than to fill it up with Un unimportant or unrelated metrics. Use clear labels that your audience will understand. So make sure that they're self-explanatory, unambiguous, keep them short so they're concise and easy to read, use recognizable abbreviations, for example, the percentage sign rather than writing percentage, and use group headings to avoid duplication so you're not repeating the same words over and over. You will want to round your numbers, and that's because it makes it much clearer and quicker for the person viewing your dashboard to take in the information. So if you look at the example here, on the left hand side, it's not super obvious, whereas you look at the right hand side, you can quickly and easily take in those numbers. You also want to make sure that you're grouping your related metrics. So if you have a mixture of products or campaigns or any of varying types of metrics, it's best to make sure that those that are related are grouped together so it's easy for anyone viewing the dashboard to see that they are related. As you can see in this example, it makes much more sense to group the apples and oranges and anyone viewing this will know that those numbers are all related. Take a look at our lesson on grouping widgets if you need help with how to do this within Gecko Board. Give your numbers context. So make sure that anyone viewing your dashboard can understand whether or not a number is good or bad. There are a number of features you can use within Gecko Board to help you do this. For example, goals or status indicators. And we have a number of comparison metrics you can add to your widgets. Be consistent with the visualizations that you're using. So don't be tempted to use different visualizations just to try and spice up your dashboard. It's better to be consistent because anyone viewing your dashboard will be able to make sense of things if similar metrics are using similar visualizations. It'll make it much clearer to the viewer. Finally, keep evolving your dashboards. We have another lesson that goes into more detail on this topic. So take a look at that for more information. And join me in the next lesson where we put all of the tips and tricks we've just discussed into action. I'll be turning this bad dashboard on the left-hand side into the lovely good dashboard on the right-hand side.